Hi, this is your host Swapil Bhartia. Today we have with us Adam Triposki, VP of Simulation and Robotics at Robotech AI. Adam, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you. It's great to be here. Before we get started and talk more about Open 3D Engine, which is going to be the theme of today's topic, first of all, let's talk about Robotech.ai. What do you folks do? I mean, it's in the name. Uh, so it's robotics and artificial intelligence. Uh, what we mostly do, we, we work with software. So uh, working on uh, the robotics stack around perception and uh, reasoning. And we focus a lot on validation tools and chiefly uh, simulation. So how to uh, do R&D with your robots, how to validate that they work correctly, uh, how to continuously improve and also assess productivity of your robotic use cases with the uh, benefits of simulation. Excellent. Thank you. And you folks are also associated with Linux Foundation's Open 3D Engine. Uh, they have their own foundation focused on uh, Open 3D Engine. Uh, talk a bit about that 3D Engine. Uh, talk about the label of your association. And when we talk about, you know, talk about the engine, because sometimes when we talk about these, these 3D engine, most people think about just gaming. But the fact is that it goes beyond that, as you also talk about modeling. And also, uh, soon Apple will come up with the Vision Pro, which means that, you know, uh, VR, 3D rendering, a lot of things are happening in this space. So let's talk about, number one, uh, Open 3D Engine, your association with the foundation. Open 3D Engine uh, is uh, the, the chief project under the Open 3D Foundation. Um, is uh, for us a base platform uh, for our simulations that we create for customers. We focus on robot operating system, which is a framework, um, a standard framework for robotics. And we are making sure that Open3D Engine uh, is a very attractive solution for robotics developers who want to use uh, ROS, so robot operating system uh, in their projects. And uh, we are a member company of the Linux Foundation and Open3D Foundation. And our focus is uh, in the special interest group uh, simulation, which I also chair. So as you mentioned, game engines, uh, what we typically uh, see as game engines, uh, and other examples being Unity and Unreal, uh, they are just uh, more in more general terms, uh, 3D content creation uh, tools to uh, build sim simulated virtual worlds. So they are um, often equally applicable for simulations. What kind of industries actually, if you look at it, almost automotive, robots, airline, I mean, every, everybody's, but what kind of industries, because I just want to understand or actually explain to our viewers the scope of these 3D engines, they are not just limited to a niche. So robotics is a very broad field. Uh, for example, as you mentioned, automotive uh, includes robotics, so self-driving cars, uh, this is a type of a robot. Uh, similarly, we see automation in fields such as mining, where we have uh, trucks or construction vehicles, so very heavy uh, vehicles, uh, very atypical uh, in comparing to classical robots uh, that uh, also need to be uh, simulated uh, because uh, they are building operations, automation of, of such sites. Uh, other areas include agriculture, uh, again, we are talking about large areas and uh, machines. Uh, but then when we move to uh, things like warehouse automation, we are talking about uh, mostly fleets of smaller robots uh, that carry um, loads um, between uh, different points. And then we get other fields, uh, such as, of course, healthcare, uh, customer robots, such as um, automated vacuum vacuums. And, and there is many fields like that, uh, many application types, uh, such as inspection and maintenance, where we have both uh, airborne robots, drones, and uh, ground robots, um, including uh, robotic dogs uh, used uh, for this kind of tasks. So this creates a very diverse uh, field. Uh, it's um, full of challenges and different applications, of course, uh, when we want to 
provide tooling for them, uh, such as simulation, have different challenges. There are different uh, key points to, to address. For example, uh, one of the great benefits of uh, game engines is the performance of uh, simulating for simulating large areas, uh, multiple robots. Uh, this is uh, especially clear when we compare these engines with classical uh, simulators that came from academia and are not coping with such tasks. Let's just specifically, since we are talking to someone from Robotech, uh, talk about uh, the the scope usefulness of you know open 3D in general, just 3D in general for robots, robotics. How does because robots when we look at this is something physical, but we are talking about rendering. Uh, what we want to do when we uh, simulate robots uh, is we want to take the software stack of the actual robot, which we want to validate, which we want to develop. That's the subject uh, of uh, our work, right? And we want to keep it, uh, but replace the robot's body and the robot's environment with virtual ones. Uh, so that includes also providing sensor information from this virtual world that uh, look very much like uh, real data. Uh, here, of course, one can consider things like photorealism of the engine. So how good does the data look? Does it look like the real world? Can it simulate uh, similar effects of the sensor, uh, such as camera, uh, lens flare, and uh, distortions? All kinds of noise that, that you see in the real data. So these are very important aspects. And uh, what's important in simulation is, of course, you can uh, go very deep into realism. So what's the physical reality uh, between the thing you want to simulate. But from engineering point of view, it's also very important to only simulate what is really needed to uh, validate that the robot works. Can we also talk a bit about distinction? And of course, you know, apologies if I'm going out of the scope of the discussion is that when we do talk about, you know, simulation, uh, like, for example, most of us don't know the internal working of, you know, the modern robots that we talk about. We uh, Most we can think of the movie Terminator uh, back in those days, or we look at Tesla, which is called, so you can call Tesla also robots on, you know, wheels, because it is making a lot of decisions, you know, just with our legs, like Boston Dynamics, it has wheels. Uh, so one is that the way we simulate how robots may look like, and one could be the view that, the world robots see because they have to make a lot of real-time decisions. So when we look at these trade engines, is it for the internal workings of robots or is it more about how people perceive them? There is um, an argument to be made for each. Of course, the primary function of the simulation uh, is typically to validate uh, the robot. So it's important what the robot sees. Uh, the, there can be a kind of user view in the simulation, so that people understand what's happening, what's being simulated, that things uh, work properly. Uh, but it's mostly about the sensor data. So cameras that are mounted on the robot, uh, it's uh, LIDARs, so laser sensors, uh, and it's uh, GNSS, uh, so global navigation positioning system, such as GPS. Um, in all these sensor data that goes into the robot reasoning system and allows it to make decision uh, to perform work uh, in this simulated environment, much like it will uh, in the real one. But also for humans, uh, if you are a company that wants to present, for example, to your customer how your robots will be deployed in their faci facility, it's very useful to capture it in, into a visual story. And of course, then you can uh, show uh, the entire view of, you know, of the operation, much like a game uh, you would present to someone. Uh, and they can really understand how this deployment will look like. They can view it from different angles you know, uh, and uh, see the productivity gains through this uh, engine as a visualization tool. Now, let's talk about, you know, uh the technologies that you folks use, you know, for this simulation and why you chose Open3D Engine, why you chose to also become a member of Linux Foundation through this project? Uh, that's a very good question. Thank you. Uh, so 
we have a field of simulators. Uh, so there are many uh, simulators. Um, it, it's often called a simulator zoo, uh, the space. So there is a, a lot of tooling to choose from, and they have different strengths and weaknesses. Um, the type of use cases uh, for robots that we as a company specialize in uh, involve large areas, um, a lot of uh, throughput in sensor data, so high fidelity sensor. Automotive is a good example. LiDARs and cameras uh, produce a lot of data. So for our company, performance was crucial. We wanted to simulate large worlds, high fidelity sensors, and multiple robots at once. A lot of classical simulators, classic robotic simulators, instantly go out of uh, consideration because of that. They just can't cope uh, with this kind of requirements. Uh, but game engines, uh, they were optimized for this kind of uh, applications, right? For large words, multiple characters, telling good visual stories. So this, this uh, was the area that where we looked. We started with Unity 3D and um, built our automotive simulations and mining simulations there. But we quickly found out, uh, you know, there are limitations to that approach. Um, there is quite some technical details on, on why uh, these engines weren't a great match. Uh, part of that is C Sharp versus C++, which we prefer for robotic stacks uh, due to robot uh, operating uh, system. Um, the technology choice. Uh, the sec second part, of course, was the limited control o o o on the um, in the um, engine code as well, because it's not open source, right? We can't uh, do everything that we would like to. We are limited to working with uh, modules, with assets, building uh, this this kind of scripting uh, end. So, Open 3D Engine as an open source, fully open source solution, uh, C++ engine. Uh, was a perfect match for us to build uh, the kind of solution that we really wanted for our use cases to keep our customers happy. And what are the reasons for joining the Linux Foundation? Uh, you can just consume their project. It's an open source community. Uh, much, commu much of this is community driven. So uh, being able to take part in this community discussions, in, in the process of open source uh, uh, content creation and choosing what kind of uh, implementation to go with so that it's uh, good for uh, many companies, so many users, uh, ensures that uh, you know someone can take over uh, the parts of this code and contribute, which for us, of course, is it's a kind of free value that we are getting. And more and more companies are building their uh, proprietary solutions on open source because of that. Uh, there is a lot of value uh, to be had from uh, the community, from other companies. It's like pooling resources, uh, which allows you to compete with the biggest players there that build their own closed source stacks. Uh, so to em fully embrace this approach, you need to engage within community. And uh, becoming a member, of course, um, grants you uh, a certain privileges as well. And um, you, you can uh, be a part of uh, where the engine is going. Can you also talk about how are you contributing to this project and foundation? We are uh, contributing quite a lot. So our, our main contribution uh, is enabling robotic simulation in Open3D Engine. Uh, we built so-called ROS to GEM, so Robot Operating System GEM. Uh, GEM is a kind of module that extends the engine. It's a highly modular engine, uh, so um, you can use it with a limited set of modules and you can add your functionalities to this kind of system. Uh, so we built uh, a GEM that includes all the necessities for robotic simulation. It's not just a connector in terms of to communicate with this robotic stack, but it provides a full kit uh, to uh, implement sensors such as cameras, lidars, IMUs, all these kind of the most popular robot sensors, and also control methods. So, robot operating system typically has standard interfaces to uh, make the robot go somewhere, right? We implement uh, not only the interfacing but also 
the components in Open 3D Engine that realize that movement. And it's both for the kind of like vacuum robots and uh, vehicle type of robots. It's a different st steering, right? So we have uh, built uh, this simulation gem. Well, even a set of simulation gems because there's more than just that. That allows you to really quickly start uh, with Open 3D Engine as a simulator. Without that, you know, you would have to build all this uh, yourself. So I think it's quite sizable uh, contribution, and um, we are continuing uh, our work there and uh, building uh, on it further. I'll go back to Robotech for a bit before we go back to talking about the foundation and the open source project. Is number one is that. Uh, when we talk about this simulation, can you also talk about the importance and role of data, APIs, and machine learning? Absolutely. So one of our uh, chief uses uh, of simulation, and increasingly so because of how uh, embodied AI is rising as a topic um, with the new language models and uh, people are looking for uh, their applications, uh, it's only uh, more important to be able to provide a lot of data for the robots, learning, training data, so uh, that these robots can encounter uh, plenty of situations and learn how to uh, deal with them. And this is uh, a field uh, which is called synthetic data. So uh, producing synthetic data uh, from the simulation, typically in large volumes, much more than you could produce uh, in reality because of you know limitations of the real world. You have to transport the robot. You have to actually, um, you are limited by the number of robots that you physically have. Well, in simulation, you can parallelize. You can uh, run many at once. You can run faster than real time if needed. Uh, so that synthetic data is immensely attractive uh, for the field of machine learning and increasingly so not only visual data uh, but the importance of uh, additional modalities such as point cloud data, uh, for example, uh, tactile, so uh, the sense of touch, and recording this kind of data and using it to um, build better uh, AI models for robotics is crucial. So. Of course, having uh, good sensors, so sensor simulation, this is the source of our data, is crucial because we need to capture what's important uh, in this uh, sensor, how, it, how they operate, what kind of data they produce uh, to be close enough to reality so that it's useful for learning. And then uh, being able to run these simulations at scale uh, so integrations with uh, all kinds of scaling tools, cloud solutions, uh, being able to run headless and so and so on. Uh, these are integrations that we also already use, uh, are building, and will continue building in uh, in this year. Uh, this is increasingly important. As a, as a company, we are embracing this uh, wave of embodied AI. Can you also talk about? Uh what kind of business model, what kind of, you know, like, because we talked a lot about the, the project and the technology side of, let's talk about the business side of Robotech and also uh, how open source, because sometimes there's a misconception that open source versus corporate or business, but the fact is that, first of all, open source is kind of driving the world today. And number two is that if you look at Linux Foundation organization, without businesses, open source will not succeed. It will not be sustainable. So talk about that. Yes, that's a very good question. And I think uh, that it's important, uh, especially for uh, sales people who uh, kind of grew up or got experience uh, a while ago uh, to update themselves on uh, the value of open source uh, business models right now. Uh, we as a company embrace it fully. So we, uh, we participate in several open source initiatives. Uh, another one, another example is AutoWare Foundation, which uh, aims to build an open source ROS2 based stack for self-driving cars. So that's an example of another initiative uh, that we are part of. Uh, 
through this cooperation, uh, we not only built a kind of network of customers uh, where, you know, there's always something custom that needs to be done. Uh, but these are just services. We also built our products based on uh, these open source engines, open source modules, uh, where we have um, open, uh, open core approach for some, but we are also transitioning to providing services. Uh, we foresee, like, like you mentioned, the synthetic data, uh, uh, simulation at scale, uh, this will be using, uh, increasingly using, and they already are in automotive, for example. This is uh, already prevalent approach to use uh, cloud computing uh, to run many, many scenarios to, uh, you know, to uh, increase uh, the amount of simulation hours that you can uh, take out uh, for, for, you know, for every uh, kind of c uh, software uh, that you produce. Uh, so, so we'll be, uh, operating also increasingly uh, in, in terms of selling services. But right now we already have our uh, IP, so our proprietary uh, modules, which extend what is uh, available in open source. Uh, for example, for sensors, it's mostly about noise, about simulating uh, them uh, in a more realistic manner. While in open source, uh, we have kind of perfect sensors, which are very useful that they are like, um, they have interfaces for developers to build on. Uh, but then the noise models are very specific to uh, devices often. Uh, so we keep the, uh, them uh, as, as parts of IP. Let's go back to and talk about the foundation of the project a bit. Uh, we are you know, in 2024 now. Um, just share kind of the things that are in your pipeline, the kind of roadmap that when we look at this project. So for Open3D Engine, um, we are building uh, three base platforms. Uh, we are building a platform for mining, for agriculture, and for warehouse logistics. These are specific types of assets that are needed, like 3D models uh, and uh, randomization tools, for example, uh, to be able to uh, you know, run uh, a lot of simulation in a useful way. So we create these three platforms uh, as, as products uh, aimed at different application fields, mining, agriculture, and warehouse logistics. So that's already on the way. Uh, and we built functionalities for generative AI, such as large language models. We want uh, these large language models to uh, help our customers uh, quickly create contents in the simulation, uh, such as uh, variants of the same environment. For example, if you would like your robot to be able to clean uh, a cantina, what you would like to ensure is that it uh, tries to do uh, it for um, a million different cantinas with different uh, layouts and different kind of problems. And generating these environments not just randomly but in a smart way uh, requires understanding of what the problem is this is an example of application of llms for simulation uh, we have several more uh, not going to talk about each of them but uh, this is a really powerful wave of new technology that we want to uh, incorporate in into our products Adam, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about not only the company, but also this foundation or project. Thank you so much for all those great insights. And I would love to chat with you again. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And uh, also thank you uh, for listening to the audience.